Bioshock Infinite has just released a brand new DLC entitled Burial at Sea Episode 1. Of course, there's going to be an Episode 2 in the future, and I actually enjoyed the first DLC, Clash in the Clouds, but this is the first story DLC where we actually get to play as Booker DeWitt and Elizabeth, but this time we're not in Columbia, we're in Rapture. Before it all went to hell in the first game, and you play as Booker DeWitt, who is a private investigator in this version of the story, and Elizabeth, who is now a femme fatale type character wants him to look for a girl named Sally. So Booker and Elizabeth decide to team up to look for this girl named Sally in the underwater city of Rapture. While short, the story is excellent and very interesting, especially since Elizabeth is such a different character in this DLC than she is in Infinite Story. She's way more serious, kind of badass, and less trusting of Booker. She is still as likable as she is in the regular story, but for a completely different reason. Booker is about the same, but still the likable rogue that we came to know and love. And of course, a big part of the story is Rapture. It's back, and it is beautifully realized like the first game. At the beginning, everything is perfectly fine, and People are just talking and having a good time, which is actually new for this game because that's never happened in Bioshock 1 or 2. Everything's just nuts right in the beginning. In this one, it starts off, you know, calm and cool. You get to, like, listen to people's conversations and that's fine. Then the craziness happens and the splicers emerge. Now graphically, it looks just as good as Infinite, and the art style of Infinite works perfectly with Rapture and creates for some beautiful scenery, especially when you're looking outside and you see all the buildings in the water and you see like whales and turtles swim by. It looks beautiful, it really does. Length aside, it's not just a reskinned version of Columbia. They actually went out of their way to recreate Rapture and give us a bunch of brand new things to look at, so I feel like this could be its own video game besides just another DLC. I really appreciate that they actually put effort into this because a lot of DLCs out there are just like 30, 40, maybe an hour worth of content that's stuff we've already done before and it doesn't really add anything to the story. Here it definitely does and it actually does feel like there's a lot of effort being put into this. While kind of repetitious, the character models look really good, especially Elizabeth's, which portrays plenty of different emotions just from the way she looks at things. Kind of like Bioshock Infinite, where she looks at something and she looks bewildered or something. They do the same thing here. And while it's not used as much as I thought it was going to be, the noir style of this game is really good, especially with Elizabeth's character, who looks like she's straight out of a noir movie. She has the jet black hair, she got the blood red lips, and she's got that dress. Ooh. Sexy. Also, some of the environment, some of the lighting, even the dialogue itself makes it feel very noirish. Now, it's not used too much, mind you, but it is used effectively. And when the action gets fired up, it looks and sounds great. I didn't have any problems technically or graphically during gameplay, which is good. And of course, the voice acting in this game is phenomenal. You have Troy Baker and Courtney Draper reprising their roles as Booker and Elizabeth. And luckily, they are great here. The material they work with is fantastic. The dialogue is great, especially when they're talking to one another. It is completely different than the way they talk to each other in Infinite, because in there, they were a little bit, you know, they were friendlier. Here, it's actually kind of hostile at times, which I actually really like that. So the dialogue here is great, and they do a fantastic job like they usually do. Now, gameplay is probably the least unique part of this DLC. It's pretty much the same as Bioshock Infinite, besides a new plasmid and a couple new weapons. Now, that's not a bad thing, because the gameplay is just as fun and fast as it was in Infinite. But they do decrease the amount of ammo you get, which is a lot like the original Bioshock. I actually enjoyed that part, because it made me think about what I should do next, besides just running in there and killing everything because I had tons of ammo. Booker can also use a couple of Vigors from Infinite in this DLC and can even upgrade those with money he finds in the environment, but he also acquires a brand new Vigor, or Plasmid seeing that this is Rapture, called Old Man Winter which freezes your enemies in place and I gotta tell you this is actually probably one of my favorite Vigors or Plasmids ever because it's so much fun. You just freeze your enemy, you go up to him, smash him into a bunch of pieces or shoot him into a bunch of pieces. I don't know, it's just satisfying. Now that's not all that is new in this game, you also get a couple of new guns. One is a Tommy gun, which pretty much replaces the machine gun, but hey, if you have a Tommy gun in a video game, you automatically get a point from me because I love Tommy guns. And a brand new weapon called the Radar Range, which shoots a laser at an enemy and if you hold it for a couple of seconds, they actually explode into big meaty chunks. And it's actually very satisfying to use, especially if there's a bunch of enemies together and you shoot one and they explode it will chain react and hit everybody else and it's very satisfying 
But that's exactly what this DLC is. It's just satisfying. The gunplay, the story itself, the sound, the graphics, the environment, everything is satisfying. It's really good. I don't understand all the complaints. Sure, the DLC is kind of short. I beat it in a little over three hours because I took my time, but some people can beat it in probably like 90 minutes. But really, I mean, it's a $15 DLC, but if you add a five, bu five bucks to that, you can get the season pass and get this one, the next one, and the past DLC all for just 20 bucks. So really, I think that's actually a deal. You're getting some quality stuff here. It's quality over quantity, and damn, is this quality. I really enjoy my time with this DLC. They did a great job of mixing the gameplay from Bioshock Infinite with the world of Bioshock 1. And I just cannot wait until Episode 2 of Burial at Sea. That was my review for Episode 1. I have to say this also, the ending in this game, this DLC was awesome. And Irrational Games, Ken Levine, I love you guys. You know how to make a great game with an excellent story, and I cannot wait until Episode 2. So there you go, there's my review for Episode 1. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, and goodbye.